Okay, folks, welcome to Lip Service. Lip Service is the show about comics and the people who read them, write them, uh, draw them, and the whole nine yards. Uh, if you like what you hear, or, or if you're watching our video version, if you like what you're seeing, uh, subscribe and like to what we're doing. You can find us on Stitcher.com, uh, which is our new, which is the new home of Lip Service, and uh, you can also see us on YouTube, which is our YouTube channel, uh, YouTube.com forward slash Kiss Me Comics. Okay, and so now, uh, if you, if you uh, also, if you are a creator, um, and or if you have an opinion. Uh, drop us a line. You can email us at lipservice at kissmecomics dot com or uh, or on YouTube. Drop down a comment uh, uh, within the comment section of it, and we'll respond back. But right now, um, our guest is Jay Burton. He is the story designer and CEO of Red Crow Comics. Jay, welcome to Lip Service. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Oh no problem. So, what what is your motivation uh, in, in into Red Crow Comics? What got you started? Really, I've been making film uh, the past six years. I'm a freelance writer, uh -huh. and I just been delving into entertainment for the past six years, and I just felt like uh, I've always been a fanatic of comics growing up. Mm -hmm. I collected them for a while. And I just stopped doing it, and when I started back around 2007, I just realized the storytelling kind of took a downfall, the creativity wasn't as strong, and I was like, you know, let me go ahead and see if I can contribute to this, and, you know, come up with my own storylines, et cetera, and it kind of helped revamp the industry in a sense, I had my part, and that kind of motivated that, so mm -hmm. Retro Comics came on the scene, and um, kind of made our own stories and, and characters in our own universe. Mm -hmm. And that's when it took off. Okay, so what were some of the things that made you stop early on as, as, as a collector? Uh, I think really it was just um, life, man. You know, I was busy. I was a kid. You know, I was on my team. I was more focused on sports. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't really anything that kind of, that was bizarre. It was just you know, all little things, activities in life that kind of, caught my attention and kept me distracted. Okay. But um, I did I did miss it for that period of time and uh, I didn't realize it until years later. Right, right. which is which is understandable. So then my next question uh, is when you finally started getting back into it, what were the flaws that you saw within the industry? Uh lack of creativity. You know, um unfortunately I felt like, you know, the stories that I read at the time, you know, was from good storytellers and illustrators like Frank Miller that mm -hmm. revamped the Dark Knight, well, the Batman image to the Dark Knight mm -hmm. series and and now uh, just the 1990, early 90 version of X-Men storylines, you know, it was interesting, you know, um, even stuff from Spawn, you know, Todd McFarlane, you know, right. the prime of the Spawn thing from the mid-90s of the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. And, um, and just a lack of creativity, you know, and I think they're still lacking that for the most part. Okay. And um, that's pretty much it. Yeah, well, I, I have to agree with you because, uh, you know, that's one of the reasons why uh, Kiss Me Comics was formed. You know, we saw a lack of co creativity and, more importantly, a lack of diverse representation as well. Right. You know, um, you know. Uh, to to his credit, Todd McFarlane with Spawn kind of, kind of was kind of ushered in a small change. But uh, my criticism on on Spawn is, unless you really were into the storyline and saw what he looked like beforehand, you would never know that he was black. You know, so it was still like he was still under a mask, as it were. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 right. You know, unlike uh, unlike Bishop or Cyborg or some of the other characters that that are floating out there, when you when you go when you look at them, you see it. You know, and um, and uh, and more importantly, the if if there were any characters of diversity, they were always second a uh, second tier. You know, 
they 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 were never the they they were never the headliners or the showstoppers. You know, I can hear some geek voice now. Black Panther, Black Panther. Okay, yeah, true enough. But they uh, this but thing with the Black Panther, it was always on again, off again, on again, off again. You know, it was like you know, and it's like when they took it off, everybody was like meh. You know, nobody raised a, a eyebrow or a big stink. To where you, you people were saying you gotta you know to say hey we want this you know it, it, it was just right. kind of like you know oh we'll toss it out there to keep everybody quiet for a hot minute and then uh when as soon as the numbers dropped they pulled it you know so so uh so you know but we digress here uh so what kind of universe did oh oh better yet with film so you were in the film industry first. So what skills did you take from your film activities to create your uh, comic universe? Hell, all of it. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, it was um, man, primarily writing. You know, I think, uh -huh. you know, being a writer, I don't think people realize how challenging and hard writing can be when you're actually passionate about it and you're forced to produce quality entertainment. Mm -hmm. And at first, you know, I did it just to be doing it to get my feet wet. Right. You know, I didn't know a damn thing about scripts. You know, I was into, you know, playing sports and, you know, kind of stumbled across it, which I'm glad I did. But since then, you know, becoming a pro freelance writer, uh, I realized, um, you know, the laws about, you know, storytelling and how important it is to produce that. So I think transitioning, you know, your writing skills over to, you know, uh, the comic world, you mm -hmm. know, um, if you can write a script, then you can write a comic script for the most part. Um, just looking at the technical side, you know, not just to you because you are the uh, second writer that we've had on lip service the first person that we had was was a uh, was somebody who's really just cutting their teeth into the industry and everything so you know so now I have uh, somebody with, uh, with with a little bit more seasoning as it were so so what how hard is it really to uh, come up with a multitude of characters to first of all react to their environment and interact with each other? Mm, that's a good question. Yeah. You know, I think that, um, again, that goes to the visionary point of view, man. You uh -huh. know, um, I think, really, it's, what, it's, it's what, what message or what example you're trying to, you know, give to those characters out, you know, to the crowd. That's uh -huh. my thing. That's my approach. You know, uh, for example, right now, um, one of our leading ladies in our, in our universe is Salter. You know, uh -huh. That's our comic. And she's a female, you know, strong lead, and she's independent. And mm -hmm. my main motivation was to, you know, kind of help revamp the female image in the comic industry and not make her a sex symbol. Okay. You know, because you know, I would say 95% of the females in, you know, all coming universe, the mainstream independent, you know, are sex symbols for the most part and not really taken serious. You know, mm -hmm. it's like looking at an animated Playboy most of the time. And um, Ouch. <laughs> that kind of motiv that kind of motivated me to, you know, you know what, you know, well, let's, let's, let's do something totally different. You know, let's create an image mm -hmm. um, on, on a certain category that's never really been done before, been taken serious. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's also been one of the main ones. So I think to answer your question is really, you know, what example are you trying to set for those characters? Right, you right. You know, um, the monster masses, that's new, and that helps out a whole lot. And yeah. that bring a lot of originality to it. Yeah, I I, I, I agree. So then with uh, her name is Salta, but okay, then then from here, 
uh, and 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 if any feminists are out there listening, going who going to listen to this, I I I would have to ask, kind of pose this question. You know, you're creating a a different female lead. However, you know, uh, uh what kind of um. I, I, I guess you could say what kind of references are you using because from from a from a feminine point of view you, you know it, it's, it's to, for, if, if I were a woman I would say well okay so you're not making her uh, a sex symbol so what you, you're still a man and it's still the same old same old no I mean what I mean as far as the details you know it's, it's we're not focused on her private areas uh -huh. we're not focused on you know extra cleavage and um and, you know, it's not even just that. It's really just giving her a strong storyline. Right. You know, for, for the most part, most guys that read comics, and I'm not making this a sex, sexist thing at all. Right, right. By, by far. But just looking on a realistic point of view, because those are subjects that I've really touched on. Right. Uh, you know, most of those female characters' storylines are not strong. Mm-hmm. get to uh, Salta what is what is the main uh, theme behind behind her t her and her adventures I'm sorry, say it again. yeah what 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 is the uh, main theme about Salta what what what's what's the storyline about what is her what is she oh, about oh yeah
Okay. And um, you get that in the first issue that adventure begins. You know, she's trying to track down this creature. Right. That's the name of the issue. It's called it's longer. Okay. Now, and, and, and I'm glad I got you on the first issue because this is a question that that I, I, I see coming. Um, with a first issue... And you know, I mean, and and I know from from doing our own first, you are really trying to sell the character and sell the storyline in this, in the first issue. How much or how little do you have? I, I guess the question is, when do you know is if if you're putting in either too little or too much or just right? Mm, I guess. The response from the from um the fans, man. You know, they always honest with you. You know, they will they will let you know, um, hey, I think this could have been a little bit more or I think, you know, um, you know, you're lacking this area or this wasn't so interested. Mm-hmm. You know, because that from a writer's point of view, you know, that's your baby. You're always gonna think, you know, oh, it's good, blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. And even your team, you know, it's good to have a, a good sound team around you, but mm-hmm. that's a handful of people compared to thousands. Speaking about fan bases, what have you done in order to uh, grow and, to, first of all, to start your fan base and to grow? Well, actually, to I'll, I'll put it in three stages: to start, maintain, and finally grow your fan base. Actually, man, we um we started uh, about two years ago on social media sites like Twitter and Facebook. Before uh-huh. thoughts, the first issue that came out, we just was put content on there uh-huh. um, and, it's, and it's the storyline and stuff like that just you know sparks some interest and you know people who would like the page and some of the content and they're like you know this is the original idea I can't wait for the first issue to come out so, oh, okay cool well we get them uh-huh. um, and then you know when the first issue came out this few months ago well uh, our goal was to hit the market that demands the comic and whereas most of the time that's comic conventions for the most part you mm-hmm. know the average Joe are not reading comics than, you know, compared to going to watch the movie, you know what I'm right. saying? Um, so we hit up, you know, the Boston Comedy Convention. I believe that's why I met one of your partners, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I yeah. might be mistaken. <laughs> uh. But um, we had the Boston Comedy Convention. Uh, that was a really good response. Mm-hmm. And we sold, you know, close to 300 copies. And uh, had a good, you know, outcome and people interacting and, and and then let us know how they feel about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we went to the next coming convention a month later, and that's the Geek Gathering. You know, shout out to my, my people in Sheffield, Alabama, but, you know, that's a coming convention in Alabama. Okay. And we sold 100, cro- 100 copies there. So, you know, we set that goal, and we, and we mm-hmm. accomplished it and so far. And, and right now, you know, the results of that has been positive because of the concept you know, and the pitch we throw on to people. Right. And when they read the product and, you know, witness themselves or what we're trying to do, you know, right. trying to help. You know, revamp characters and bring some diversity to the comic industry. Right. Just bring, you good, just bring you some good original storytelling, man, for the most part, you know? Right, right. To be honest. <laughs> yeah. So, um, that's been the process. Well, well, that's well that, and, that, and that's good. Now, now, and my, my question, then my other question is, it, it, it sounds like you have gotten uh, uh, some good feedback, which is good. Now, and so now, do you think your timing has been perfect uh, due to the fact of, you know, uh, some of the major publishers have gone for diversity and that those efforts have been met with... Uh, Backlash. Yeah, I really do. Um, and I, it's funny you say that because people that I talk to that's in the comic industry too, other writers mm-hmm. and publishers, uh, they had a, a, that's that goal, you know, kind of to attack right now mm-hmm. uh, while a lot of that's in a dark hole of mm-hmm. what you're saying. And that's been one of our main motivations too. You know, why everything is in the dark, you know, bring that light. 
Yeah. Now look at me. We sound we, we sound like superheroes in the fall. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But uh, well, yeah. In a way, uh, but so yeah, that's that's pretty much it, man. You know, attacking it right now. You know, while you can, you know, kind of bring that beacon because yeah. um, when the competition is is such a high stake, you know, especially in the mainstream, like um, you, you're not going to get much aid for the most part unless you know somebody, know somebody, know somebody. You can yeah. Have to be a process. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, and be, be, because now with the internet and social media, it you know it has uh, you know I, I I play devil's advocate. On the one hand, it, it you know if you're net savvy and everything, it, it has been a boon, you know, right, to right. to you. But see, they only at the same time, you know, it it oh it it does kind of put you into where you always have to be constantly on to keep that blip going too. You know you know, you don't have the the luxury of the major publishers to have, first of all, uh T V and uh multimedia at your disposal, first off. You know and then uh, you already have more more work to do because you don't have also you also don't have the same distribution channels as the major publishers. You know, right? But you know, it demands a lot of your work. Your your work is very demanding. You got to be at it consistently all the time. Right. Yeah, and uh, you know. Exactly, exactly, you know, and, but still, the, you know, the one thing about it is, you know, and, uh, you know, you, and you could agree with me or, or, or expand on it at, at the very least with, with the digital, with, with the digital aspect of it all, it, you know, on the one hand, you don't necessarily have to worry about a distributor. All you have to do is worry about getting the, getting the content done and done on time. Yeah, you know. I agree. Yeah. So, and, you know, and, and speaking of which, so so where can people uh, find Salta? They can go to our website, www.redcrowcomics.com, mm-hmm. or you can order on Indie Planet. Okay. And um, it's been, uh, we're about to hear everybody's feedback. You know, you can also follow us on Facebook, you know, www.facebook.com slash Red Crow Comics mm-hmm. or www.com twitter.com slash Red Crow Comics and okay. um, like us follow us and go to our YouTube you know subscribe exactly and we like to get your feedback we love to interact with the fans uh, I think that's very very important especially starting off being a new brand in the yeah. market like that mm-hmm. because uh, we are new you know we haven't been around for years and like this whether you one year or 15 years like us or 75 years like certain other companies you know and this is to me one of the major disconnects of the major publishers I would say I don't, I'm not gonna say all of them but for a good hunk of them they've gotten complacent because they forget you know aside from the big two because now for them they use their they look at the comics their, their the books as just more than a marketing tool but for the rest of them you t- you know if it ain't, if people aren't reading your books, guess what? You wish you know all, all, all you do is simply just you know you you need them. You know they're the ones who give you who are making you a paycheck. You know, right. you know, and yeah. you know, and and it's funny the you know I've gone to a couple of conventions not too long ago. And seeing some of my great idols and everything, and you know, wanting to, uh, you know, get, you know, you know, not not even so much a full interview, just a, you know, just a little commentary or whatever, and getting blown off. You know, I'm like, really, you know, 
uh, uh, you know, I mean, I was taken taken aback by it. I'm like, well, you know what? If it weren't people like me being total fanboy, whatever, whatever, you know, you wouldn't have people's, you know, you wouldn't be behind this this free table now as a guest with a line waiting, you know, with a line of people, you know, waiting to get your John Hancock or your George Perez or whatever, whatever. Yeah, because you know, it's like you, you, your fans contribute to you know majority of what you're doing. I mean, I'm gonna, uh, to let everybody out there know right now that's listening, mm. you bring your ass to our table, you will be accepted. Okay, <laughs> you will, you will be loved. You exactly, know, we really appreciate you guys. Right, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a fan. I'm always going to be a fan. Mm-hmm. You know, um, ego, I think, kill a lot of potential of, of your craft. Yeah. Um, and, and, and people, if there's ego, you know, that, and people are not stupid, you know, it's just logic. Right. Um, but if you're, if you're approachable, you know, and not, not only with your, you know, with, with your product, but mm-hmm. also on a social standpoint of view, just as a person, right. that makes your product even more interesting. Yeah. You know, even more acceptable. Yeah, you know, that, um, that's true. So, so, anyway. Yeah. Well, I agree. Uh, I, 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 I hear you, and I, and I, and I totally understand that. You know, um, now, it, you know, and so, so we're gonna wrap this up with, with, a, with, a, with one quick, with uh, one last question for anybody who is looking from the outside in, looking to get into this. What kind of advice would you give them? appreciate that and, and and if uh, for you other creators who are who who have been hearing me chirp I need content I need content this is what I'm talking about if you got something that you that that it, I don't care if it's six months down the road the, 
it, or, or a month down the road. Give me that little blip. I will put it in the show. I mean, because uh, actually I'm looking forward to expanding it to where, you know, it would be a, 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 a little independent news section to where uh, creators studios could say hey well you know what I've got this coming out or we've got this coming out so on and so forth you know it, 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 it you know it, it can't hurt it certainly can't hurt so folks we have been talking to Jay Burton uh, uh, creator writer and CEO of Red Crow uh, comics and you can find them on in you, you can find their first book Salta on IndiePlanet.com, you can follow them on Facebook, you can follow them on Twitter, and you can find them on YouTube. Okay, and for us, you know, it's close to that time, so we're gonna wrap this up. And remember, if you like what you have heard or you like what you have seen, subscribe to us. You can find us on Stitcher.com forward slash kiss me forward slash you look under lip service, you will find us. You look, uh, you go to our YouTube channel, Kiss Me Com the Kiss Me Comics. You will find the lip service section, okay? And you can always follow us on Twitter, uh, Kiss Me Comics. If you got, if you have a question, uh, you can email us lip service at kissmecomics.com or comment or tweet us on YouTube or Twitter, and or follow us on our Facebook page. And we will respond to that. And if and, and if it's a interesting enough question, guess what? I will make mention of it on the show uh, on a subsequent show. So Jay, thank you so much for being a guest on our show. And hopefully, within the next couple of months, we can come back and see what's really we'll see what else is going on. Oh yes, sir. No doubt. I appreciate you having me on, man. I appreciate it a whole lot. And um, that's a luck of everything you guys are doing. And we'll definitely keep that going, man. Okay, I agree. Appreciate that. And now from here, uh, I don't know yet. We we that that I will probably have some party words or a book review. I don't know. And it all, it all depends on, on on how sleepy I am and, and 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 what I feel like doing. But but we will have something coming up later. Okay, so this concludes. So we'll be back shortly. This book is rated for readers 17 and older. The Lucky Seven killed her husband. Now Serena Park as Serenade goes for justice. They have to pay. Her weapon, a super deadly poison of her own design. Who will be hurt? They have to pay. Those bastards. They must pay. Serenade number 11, available now at the www.kissmecomics.com website. The bodies start falling now. Okay, should cosplayers not attend or be allowed to attend conventions? This is, I'm Statchings and this is Kira, keeping it real always. As of late, there has been a furor of, from attendees from certain major cons. And they have gone on, on the record saying that cosplayers... Uh, people who dress up as superheroes, superhero heroines, uh, and the like, uh, should not be allowed to participate in the cons, uh, as they are creating, uh, they're taking the say, they're taking sales away from the attendees. And my take and opinion on this is this: grow up. To those of you who are talk, who who are placing blame on somebody else, accept responsibility for what you're doing or not doing. Uh, so, so somebody dressed up as a as a monster or whatever is not hurting your sales, okay? Especially if that particular person is in front of your table and there is a crowd of people in front of your table. Okay, 
And moreover, what about when they are not around you around your table? There are still plenty enough people who are not into that walking to and fro looking for something. Take the take responsibility for your own actions. If you're not gaining the sales that you that you expect then you need to check your strategy and your take on what you're doing. There's something that you're not doing. Maybe it could be that your work isn't perfect. It could be that maybe instead of instead of being an artist alley, you should have bought a booth. Okay? Or or maybe your presentation overall is lacking. So so, you know, to, to sit up here and blame uh, a con, a, a, a con promoters for allowing cosplayers to be at to be at the show, to be in to be at the con, to doing what they do, that's not that that that's neither here nor there, because first of all, the promoters are going to. First of all, they their their job is to pay, to put as many people into that place as possible. Which is why you're paying anywhere from 30 to on up for a table, booth, whatever at that particular con. It's, it's their job to bring in as many people as it is. And that means bringing in, bringing in people who, who like to, first of all, who like to do it uh, as, as, as a way of showing that they, they like the medium. What's wrong with that? Okay. These people spend just as much time as in energy creating these costumes, and I. And if you go to our to go go to our site kissmecomics.com, we we have some some gorgeous costumes that we've that we've taken pictures of from past fan expos. So, and and to me, they they bring more people who may would never attend. That gives you a better chance to get your book, your work into somebody else's hands besides some, 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 besides friends and family and colleagues. So it, 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 instead of instead of having a, a bitch fest saying they're taking sales away from you, you should be embracing it because because they're bringing somebody different, so, so somebody who who may simply say. Well, you know what? I'm dressed up as whoever from DC or Marvel. Let me check out this person. And maybe if, if you were really savvy, instead of having a bitch fest, maybe you need to ask that 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 guy or girl. Well, hey, I've got this character. Could you do this? And that and that way you can help get yourself promoted. Because let's face it, if they're dressed up as your character. And somebody says, "Ooh, I like that convert. I like that costume. Where's it from?" Guess what that person is going to say? Hmm. So instead of perhaps having a hissy fit, saying they're taking sales away from you, maybe you should be talking to that person to say, "Hey, maybe you could bring some sales to me." Scary concept, isn't it? This is Kira, and I'm Stats Jenkins. This book is rated for readers 17 and older. The Lucky Seven killed her husband. Now Serena Park as Serenade goes for justice. They have to pay. Her weapon, a super deadly poison of her own design. Who will be hurt? They have to pay. Those bastards. They must pay. Serenade number 11, available now at the www.kissmecomics.com website. The bodies start falling now.